OK, so let's create an interaction system for our project. Here is example. Uh, we come to the object, we see interaction prompt, press button, something happens. Another object, and another object. So door opens itself, button launches particles, and person shows us a message. So how it works? Um, our player character got this collision box, and when this box overlaps with object, player sends message to object, I'm overlapping with you. And during this overlap, if player presses a button, it, again, it sends message to object, I'm pressing the button. And then object does whatever it wants with that information, door opens itself, button launches particles, and person shows us a message. Now let's recreate this together. So I'm going to delete all of this. Delete, 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 delete. And I'm going to use default mannequin, so you, you can follow along. Rotate it a bit. And let's auto possess it. And let's test it. Okay. Okay, so let's create our door, uh, create blueprint, actor, let's call it BP, door, my door, my door. Open it up and add static mesh, static mesh. Let's select our door. Uh, let's put it in a level. Okay. Now we need blueprint interface to send messages from player to door. So let's create it. Right click, blueprints, blueprint interface. Let's call it BPI, my interaction. Interaction. Let's open it. Now we need to add messages that we're going to send between player and door. So let's add uh, started overlapping, ended overlapping, and pressed button. Uh, my started overlapping, click add function, my ended overlapping, and another one, my Pressed button, button, compile and save, and that's it. Now we need to put this interface into our player and into our door. Let's open our player, go to class settings, and go to this interface category, click add, and select it. BPI, my interaction. Compile and save, and let's add it to our door. Same, go to class settings, interface, add, BPI, my interaction. Compile and save. So now let's add collision box that's going to overlap these objects. Open our character, click add, type collision, box collision. And let's look at it in a viewport. So let's adjust its size and position. Click save. Now let's go to event graph. So let's get overlap event. And when that happens, we will send message to our interface. 
Here it is. My started overlapping message. Make sure it's message. And let's add end overlap event. And another message. My ended overlapping. Compile and save. Yeah, let's plug our actor into target. Compile and save. Now let's receive those messages. Open our door. And let's add event started overlapping. My started overlapping. It must be event. Let's print string for now. Door started overlapping. And another event. Make sure it's event. Another print string. Door. End it. And let's test it out. Compile save. Press play. Started overlapping. We can see in the top left corner. Ended overlapping. Great. Now let's add button press event. And when it pressed, we send our our interface message. My pressed my pressed button message. My pressed. Uh, now, if you don't see message, uh, uncheck this context sensitive box. And here it is: our interface and our message. And let's connect our target from from overlapping event. Now we only want this button press to be sent when we are overlapping. So let's check for it. Let's create variable is overlapping. And let's set it when we are overlapping. Open true. And when we stop overlapping, let's set it to false. False. And, la and now let's check for it. Add branch. And if it's true, we are overlapping. Let's send press button message. If false, and if it's false, we don't send anything. And let's add this pressed button event to our door blueprint. My pressed, my pressed button. And let's print string door pressed button. Compile save. And let's test it. Started overlapping, ended overlapping, pressing button, pressing button outside, pressing button inside. Great. So basically, interaction system is already working. Now we need to add door opening logic. Let's do this. Let's go to a door blueprint. Let's find begin play. Here it is. And on begin play, let's save default door rotation. So let's get our door mesh. Get world rotation. And save it into variable. 
default door rotation. Let's do this on begin play. Now on button press we will adjust this rotation. So let's go to this event. Let's add our door mesh. Set rotation. Now let's split rotator and just adjust the rotation. Get our default rotation. Also split it. And, and let's subtract from our default Z rotation. Uh, 90 degrees connected and let's set it up so on button click we will uh, rotate our door by 90 degrees so this will open the door and now we need to close the door so let's do flip-flop So this is going to be first button press. Let's copy past it. Control C, Control V. This is going to be second button press. And we will change rotation to default. Right? Default to rotation. On first button press, we rotated 90 degrees. On second, button press, we rotate it back to default. Compile save. Test it. Great, but we don't have button prompt yet. So let's create it. Right click, user interface, widget blueprint, user widget. Let's name it W. Interaction prompt. Open it up. Now let's add canvas. A border and text. Let's put border in the middle. A reset position. Set alignment to 0 0.5. 0 0.5 and set size to content. Let's change color to black and set transparency 0.5. Okay. And let's add some padding. Okay, good enough. Compile and save. Now let's add this widget to our door. Go to viewport, add widget, 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 let's name it button prompt, well, it's interaction prompt, <laughs> interaction prompt, and let's add our widget into this widget class. Widget interaction prompt. Now let's adjust position. In the middle. And and right, we need to change text. So let's compile and save and go back to widget and change text to press F to interact and save. Now let's test it. Right now we can see it only from one side, so let's adjust it. Go to door blueprint and change space to screen. Compile and save. Play. Much better. 
Now we need to show it uh, only when we are overlapping the door. Let's go to door blueprint, event graph. Let's drag our widget here. And set visibility to visible when we uh, started overlapping. Copy past and well, not enough space. Let's adjust it. And we will set visibility to false when we are ended overlapping. When we start overlapping, we set it visibility to true, and we end it overlapping, visibility is false. And by default, it should be not visible. So let's search for visible and uncheck it. Great. Let's compile, save, and test it. Now, when we come close to door, we see interaction prompt. You go away, you don't see it. Press button, works. Press button away, nothing happens. Great. Our door is finished. So now we can create as many doors as we want. Another door. And another door here. And let's put one in the building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's test it. A door is working. Another door is working. And building door is working. Pretty cool. Okay. Now let's create button that launches particle effect. Uh, right click, blueprint, blueprint class, actor, BP, my button. Open it up, let's add static mesh, let's put button mesh, button. So let's add a button. And let's put it in the level. Now first we need to add interface, our BPI, my interaction. So Let's do that. Go to class settings, interface, add my interaction. Compile save. Now let's go to event graph. And we can just copy past from a uh, door blueprint. So let's take this. Control C. Control V. Uh, well, let's change this door to button, 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 and let's copy past button, press event, go, button, press button, let's test it out. Compile, save, play. Button started overlapping, ended overlapping. Pressed button. Interface is already working. Now let's add button prompt and particle effect. Go to button blueprint, add widget. 
Traction prompt. Traction prompt. And add it in the widget class. Let's look at it in viewport. Move it up and rotate. And let's change space to screen. Uh, compile save. And let's hide and show it when we are overlapping. Set visibility to true. And set visibility to false. Connect nodes. And let's test it. Right, we need to hide it by default. So, let's go. Select widget. Search for visible. And uncheck it. Here we go, we have our interaction prompt. Now let's add particle effect. So let's create new blueprint. Blueprint, actor, and called BP, particle explosion. And put it in level. Let's open it up and add Niagara system and select explosion explosion simple explosion it should be in your project by default let's compile and save we need to uncheck auto activate we're going to activate it manually so let's compile and save again and now we need to connect our button to our particle system. So we open our button and add new variable and call it particle system and change type to, to BP particle explosion. The one we just created. BP particle explosion, BP particle explosion. Right. Now let's make it public and compile and save. Now, because it's public, uh, we can go to our viewport and select our button, and we have this particle system picker. So we can pick actor from level. So I picked particle system. And now we can activate it from button blueprint. So on the pressed button event, we get our particle system. And activate it. Connect. Compile and save. And let's here we go. On button press, we have a particle system launch. So now we can uh, duplicate our buttons and our particle systems. And right now, all buttons activate one system, left one, and we can change target to second system, and this one to third system. And now first button activates first particle system, second activates second, and third one activates third one. Great. Now let's delete them. Okay, now let's create NPC. So right click, 
blueprint hector bp my npc open it up add skeletal mesh Now let's save it and put it in a level. And again, let's add our interface to a new blueprint. So go to MINPC, settings, interfaces, add PPI, my interaction, compile and save. Now we go to event graph and let's copy past nodes again. Let's go to door and control C and control V. Let's change door to NPC, NPC, NPC and Let's get pressed button event. Again, control C, control V, and rename it to NPC. Oh. Compile and save, and let's test it out. Mm -hmm. Now it's not working by default. So let's open Blueprint and select our Skeletal Mesh. And in Collision Settings we see that Generate Overlap Events is disabled. So let's activate it and let's set Collision Preset to Block All Dynamic. Compile and Save. Play. And here we go, we have overlapping events and button pressed events. So let's again add interaction prompt and add message from NPC. Go to blueprint, add widget, select our widget class. Widget class. Compile save. Now let's adjust it. And change space to screen. Let's test it out. Uh, let's disable it by default. Visible. Uncheck, compile, save. And it's not working because we need to add logic. So let's do that. We go to event graph and on started overlapping event, we add a widget. and set its visibility to true and connect it and on ended overlap event we set visibility to false compile and save and now we have our prompt So now let's create text message. Uh, it's gonna be another widget, so let's create it. Right click, user interface, widget blueprint, user widget. W, my NPC message, PC message. Open it up. Again, let's add canvas. 
border and text set border to middle reset position uh, set size to content change color to black transparency to 0 0.5 okay adjust text let's make font size a bit bigger 36 uh, let's increase padding 20 40 or maybe 40 40 20 right it's better uh, now let's go back to border and adjust alignment uh, 0 0.5 0.5 and let's compile and save and now let's add this message to our npc now i forgot to rename our button prompt so let's do that it's interaction prompt and let's add another widget this one is npc message Let's change class. My NPC widget. My NPC message. Uh, let's adjust it. And let's change space to screen. Now, now let's hide it by default. uncheck visible and let's show it on button press set visibility to true and also we need to hide it on second button press so let's add flip-flop and hide it on second press visibility false let's test it all right maybe lower it a bit Now I want to change this uh, message text from this blueprint. So let's do that. Go to widget and select text and make it variable. It's variable. And let's change the name to my NPC message text. Compile and save. Now we go to NPC blueprint event graph now let's find begin play here it is let's move it a bit so now we need to access a widget blueprint from npc blueprint so let's cast to our widget blueprint my npc message So this is type of object and we need to connect actual object and actual object is this one or this one so let's add it to the event graph get widget and connect it to object so now we have access to this widget from this blueprint and we can change this variable from npc blueprint right 
So we get our NPC message text variable and changes text to something new. Let's let's say one, two, three for now. Compile and save. And we have one, two, three. Great. Now let's make it variable and call it NPC message message text. And move it here and make it public. And now in our viewport, we can select our NPC and change npc message text to anything we want let's play great so now we can duplicate our npcs change the messages and change the models and let's test out And here we go. We have different NPCs with different messages. So we created interaction system and now we can interact with doors, buttons and NPCs. That's pretty cool. Good job.